Pineda.org for War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Juan? Well, we end today with a look at South Africa, which is poised to host the World Cup, the premier international football competition, next year. While Durban completes the finishing touches on its new stadium, thousands of the city's poor who live in sprawling informal settlements are threatened with eviction by the ruling African National Congress or ANC slum clearance policies. Late this Saturday night, an armed gang of some 40 men attacked an informal settlement on Dunbar's Kennedy Road, killing at least two people and destroying 30 shacks. A thousand people have reportedly been driven out of the settlement. Uh, eyewitnesses say the attackers acted with the support of the local ANC structures. Members of the Durban Shack Shack Dwellers Movement, which brings together tens of thousands of Shack Dwellers to demand their right to fair housing in the city, were holding a youth camp when they were attacked. Well, last month we interviewed a young leader from the Shack Dwellers Movement, 18-year-old Mazwi Nizmada. And he is president of the movement's Youth League. He's been displaced by this latest attack. He's currently in hiding. We also spoke with Reverend Mavuso Megatisani from the Rural Network in South Africa. They were in the U.S. speaking out against the anti-poor policies in post-apartheid South Africa. I began by asking Maswi to explain the Shack Dwellers Movement. The Shack Dwellers Movement is a movement that was made by the poor people, the people who were waiting for houses since 1994. It's the movement that is made out of poor people only, because the poor people are feeling betrayed. So they decided to join hands together and approach the government and make the government to be aware that hey, there are still poor people in South Africa because they feel that they are the forgotten citizens of the country. The only thing that is being remembered is to build stadiums for the 2010 World Cup. They don't, know, they don't talk about the poor people anymore. They're only talking about promoting the country. So the poor people decided to join hands together and approach the government and say, hey, we are still existing in the country, so we are still waiting for those houses. What is the Slum Act? When was it passed, and what has been the impact of it uh, on uh, the, poor, the poor communities of South Africa? The Slums Act was first appealed in 2006, uh, when the Shack Dwellers Movement was invited at the provincial parliament in Peter Maritzburg, when it was still appealed, you know. So we were invited to come and observe while they were introducing the Slums Act. And it has not been good for the shed dwellers because the Slums Act says you should not resist eviction. If you resist evictions, uh, you might be fined at 20,000 rand or being sentenced at five years. So most of us cannot afford that because we want to be in the shacks. We want to be close in the city. I mean, that, that's what we want. We want the government to provide houses where the people are, close to our working place, close to our schools, close to the hospital. Plus, we have a right to be close to the city. Isn't South Africa unusual in that it has housing as a human right written into the Constitution? It does, yes, but now it seems like it's working for certain individuals, not for the poor people, because you'll be surprised and shocked when you go to South Africa, you'll see thousands and thousands of informal settlement, and then we just don't understand, because, I mean, since 1994, these people are still on the waiting list. Each informal settlement has about 7,000 people, and it our movement in, in Deben only, we have 14 settlements, and each of those have about 7,000, 5,000, and you will just find it so hard to understand why at this time of the year. And as we mentioned, the World Cup, it's uh, almost the only way we talk about South Africa today in the United States. But what exactly is happening uh, to people as a result of the World Cup, which is watched by over a billion people and is going to be in South Africa for the first time? Our government is concerned about developing spaces, not population development. So as they develop spaces, they move away people. They say people should move away so, uh, to pave way for de development to happen. So by building this stadia, they are m moving people away from the cities and away from their original places, even in rural areas, because they want to build malls, big malls. They want to build freeways. So they, uh, to us, this uh, World Cup is a mass eviction of poor people. So that's what is happening in South Africa, because we, we are not going to, to live and stay in the stadium. We are not going to sleep there. So they are destroying our houses or our homes, because we can afford those homes. So they say 
they call them slums, and so we are evicted. So we, we are saying this World Cup is accompanied by evictions and destruction of our own and demolition of our own homes. And when you say they are moved out, does the government re — where are they being moved to? Does the, is the government providing them uh, adequate housing where they're being moved to? Government is promising them that they are going to have houses about 50 kilometers away from the cities, only to find that there are no houses. You will be moved to a transitional relocation camps where they say you will have to wait for some a certain years before you get housing. Give us a historical perspective. Um, Reverend Mavuso, uh, you were there before the first democratically elected government of Nelson Mandela. You were there under apartheid. Compare that to today. There is now a widening gap between the rich and the poor. During apartheid, it was the whites and blacks. Uh, so now that is the type of apartheid that we see now, that people are getting more richer and people are getting more poor. Did you ever get a chance to meet Nelson Mandela? You're 18 years old, but President Mandela is still alive. I mean, I didn't get a chance to see the days of Nelson Mandela, but I mean, I'm hearing things that he's such a wonderful man, he's such a good man, you know, he has that powerful voice, but I don't believe because he is still alive. But they are informal, they are shack dwellers in South Africa, but he hasn't said anything. Uh, there is that huge gap. Mandela is up there and the people are down there. So it's very hard to like get or a chance to meet with Nelson Mandela. Even the current president, I haven't met him, you know, because those people are high up there. The only time they come to the communities is when the elections are going to take place and they come with bodyguards. So for me, it's hard to understand why does a man that we must elect as a president come to our community as bodyguard? That means he fears us, you know. So how can we access the man who comes with bodyguard in our communities? I don't understand. And if it's uh, true, as you say, that there's been so many, so many problems in terms of the widening gap in the country, why is the ANC leadership still receiving such huge support at the polls? People were educated uh, through what we call domestication, that they should love one party because this, that party uh, gave them, will give them freedom. This is a, a majority party of, and this is a black government. So they say, if we vote for another party, then it means it will not be democracy. They think democracy comes with the ANC. So they think ANC is democracy. Reverend Mavuso of the Rural Network in South Africa and 18 year old Mazwi Zamanda, president of the Shack Dwellers Movement's Youth League. We only have 15 seconds, but he is now in hiding after a major attack on their shacks this weekend, Saturday night. Um, Mazwi, what happened? Very quickly, who did this? Who attacked people, killed two, kill, uh, and hurt the shacks? Thank you. Uh, firstly, we were not clear, but on Sunday during the day, we went back to Kennedy Road to check on how things were, how the conditions were. I mean, it became clear when we saw the ANC guys were there, you know, enjoying themselves, having that gathering. We, even we have the, five the seconds. Was, we have five seconds. Even, I mean, so clear, it's the ANC, because they have mentioned it, that they want, uh, uh, the, the, the whole informal settlement to belong to the end. Mazwin is a we have to leave it there. I mean